So before we start, I just want to have one more sound check to ensure that everybody who is here in the room can hear me clearly. Just a thumbs up or say we can hear you. That would be great. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Beautiful. I think we're all on the same page, so we'll get started. Thank you all for coming today. It's data. Thank you for this blessing to have the privilege to connect with you all um, in these challenging times. Uh, my name is Mark Dunn. I am a self-awareness speaker and a business developer. And uh, before we get into the content that I'm going to deliver on self-awareness and the importance of having it, especially in these challenging times to seek employment, uh, I'll give you a little background about myself. Uh, I've had a chance to uh, work in many different professions. Uh, I graduated from Carleton University with a sociology anthropology degree. And then I was able to get my first job as a teacher. And I worked as a teacher for about five years in a private school setting. Uh, I transitioned into the mental health profession and worked in the mental health profession for almost 12 years. Uh, and then I made an adjustment and switched into some business development. But I started off in marketing and community outreach. Uh, I did some jobs where I worked as an, an executive director for a marketing firm uh, where we would talk to small business owners about how they can um, work on developing their uh, social media platforms to get their brand and content out to the market. And then I transitioned working into a, a health and wellness clinic where I was the marketing director to help the uh, clinical staff obtain new patients. I ran uh, free uh, massages for 15 minutes with a uh, certified Reiki massage specialist. And we did that for health fairs for, for numerous organizations. Uh, and then I moved into some staffing and um, recruitment um, right before COVID-19. I did that for about half of a year. Um, so I've had many different steps in many different careers, and uh, it's been able to add value to me in, on many different levels where I've been able to work on um, putting together things that are associated to bring in value and helping the world be a better place. So that being said, what I would like to do today is start off by talking to you directly about self-awareness. And what is self-awareness? Well, self-awareness is the idea of knowing who you are, the value of who you are, your worth. Self-awareness is focusing on what makes you unique to become elite. You see, self-awareness is something that is not really taught in our world today. It's not really taught from the perspective of helping people feel more secure and confident in themselves because most people to follow a cookie cutter approach to living life. They're, they're in a mindset of, I need to go to school I need to get the job. I need to focus on, you know, getting these types of experiences to help me get my ideal job that equals the income so I can buy the house, buy the condo, buy the car, and then live life happily ever after. But with COVID-19 happening, that's actually exposed people to their core. It's exposed us from the inside out. And what we've seen is that we've seen a lack of people's self-awareness. We've seen that people are somewhat lost. They don't know where to go, what to do, who they are. And in essence, having a pandemic like this to expose us is going to help us. It's going to help humanity and it's going to help you as individuals trying to make your way through the marketplace. So how does that work and, and, and what does that look like? Well, let's first look at the idea of your skill set and your attributes, I like to call them. Your attributes are things that I'm focusing on that's not for the job, but what I'd like to call the soft, skilled attributes. And a part of self-awareness is acknowledging and identifying those soft, skilled attributes. So what do I mean by that? Well, things like gratitude. First of all, how do you wake up in the morning? How do you see yourself in the morning? Do you see this as just another day? Or do you see this as an opportunity to make this day count? in some way, shape, or form. If that is in um, the idea of looking at gratitude for being thankful that you have a home, to being able to walk, to talk, to have the opportunity to use technology to help me be better. Do I have a, an, an idea or a mindset of going into the day feeling 
a sense of gratitude? Secondly, do you have empathy? We're missing empathy in our world today because this is why we're having a lot of other issues that are the byproduct of COVID-19 exposing us from the racial tension in the world to small businesses that are closing down and people are, are hurting with their relationships, with their income, with their whole existence. Do we have enough empathy in the world to care for people, to want to help them, coach them through that? And then we want to exercise something called patience. Do you have the patience to know that this is a, a marathon and not a sprint? You see, ladies and gentlemen, when we're going through this transitional period of time, this is only going to be for a time. But you have to be ready with the endurance that starts with the mental component because this is an insular job versus the external world job. You've got to be stronger up here and in your heart than what the world is asking you to be stronger on paper, like a resume or your credentials. Because now more than ever, companies are going to start looking at gratitude, empathy, patience, faith, humility, grace, hope, resiliency, perseverance. They're going to be looking at all those components that I've just shared with you to see if those soft skills will in turn bring value to the work culture, to, to your productivity, and to the clients that you serve or the people that you serve. When you're in a position to have your own example from an lead you in the position to make change or to impact a company or to get that job, you're doing the right thing because you're working from a perspective of you being your authentic self. And self-awareness helps you capture that in a way that will allow for you to be marketable to the marketplace. So what do I mean by being marketable? Well, when you look at the market now, the market is the decision-making aspect of what's going on. When you're looking to apply for jobs and look for work, is your resume reflecting who you are or is your resume trying to compete with others in the, posi in the position using larger words that don't convey how you even articulate yourself? You see, a lot of people are also selling fake content on their resume. Because if I ask you questions associated to who you are and you tell me, you know what, Mark, I'm, I'm, I'm a leader, I'm a go-getter, I have the ability to... Um, established trust that allows people to want to talk to me. Those are the things that I would want you to convey on your cover letter, in your LinkedIn bio, because that's authentic. But when you take those soft words or those same words that are really small and start using academia to support who you are and what you are, you're losing sight of the process. You're losing sight of having perspective on what really are you doing. Are you selling or are you trying to share? Because today it's about sharing. When you put your resume out to the world, you're sharing your resume to the world. You're not selling your resume. You're not a commodity. If anything, you are an asset. Being an asset requires you to share that with the world so that you can share your value. So when you look at employment opportunities now and you're looking to get to where you want to get to, we have to be ready, willing, and able to deal with this high level of rejection at times because rejection is, gonna, is our new norm. Rejection is something that is coming at a very high rate because this is the first time in human history where five generations of individuals are going out into the workforce to try to find work. Five. And if now we've gone from here which was the norm prior to COVID to like way out here, you've got to stand out. And one of the best ways to stand out in the job market is authenticity, is being yourself, is being in a position where you are the same person you are on paper as you are when they meet you for an interview. It is no longer about selling fake confidence and your image or your degrees bringing value to you. Those things used to protect you. They no longer protect you because COVID has exposed us. They want to know what is it about you that makes you unique and elite from someone else out there. It's not just the skill part. It's about those other components, the empathy, the gratitude, the grace, the humility, the ability to engage with people, 
to help people, to serve, and use examples, concrete examples of how that works for you. So that's one other aspect of learning how to cope with this new reality from an employment perspective. The next side of things that I want to focus on is something called leadership. Leadership is key to your direction of where you're going. And self-leadership is what I'm really leaning towards. And why am I talking about self-leadership? Because I believe that each one of us is our own public relation expert of ourselves. You are your own HR department. You are what I call C a CHO, a chief heart officer. That's what you are. And what you want to do is you want to set yourself up to be the best chief heart officer by being an, an example and showing the example of that, either using your social media, when you're communicating to people during interviews or with people, you want that authenticity to shine because the attention you get from being authentic is better than someone who's fronting because when you're fronting or faking confidence in a room when you're networking or doing something with a bunch of people eventually something's going to hit you where your reality is going to meet up and it's going to bring out yourself your real self and people are going to wonder who you, who are you i never heard that before i never knew that before so you have to be your own public relation leader you've got to realize that you're a walking talking billboard 24 7 to a certain degree because you're probably that in your home, because you might have a family or kids or you're in a relationship where you want to be yourself and you got to stay true to yourself. And in your professional setting, you want to be true to yourself and you want to share, but you want to share in a very strategic way when it comes to the workforce. Right now, it's about strategy, but it's not about strategy to front. It's about the strategy to be your authentic self on all levels so that you don't walk into a situation feeling more nervous and overwhelmed because of your insecurities, but you actually feel nervous because you want to do well. There's a difference there. Your insecurities can make you feel so scared and, and create self-doubt that when you're in the interview, it's written on your face. But when you want to do well, and you're nervous, it's not so much written on your face, it's how you take moments in the interview to pause, reflect on the question and answer it. To give yourself the permission needed to be vulnerable enough to show that that's a sign of strength. And most importantly, acknowledging where you bring value and where you might need help to increase your value to even bring more value in the future. So that leads me to my last or second last point, which is relationships. The relationship you have with yourself is just as important as the relationships you build today. People today want relationships based upon not what you're going to take from them, but what you're going to give to them. The secret to living is giving. We've lost essence, the idea of that through our own ego, pride, and way of life prior to COVID-19. And COVID-19 has basically punched us in the mouth to say, wake up. This is not about taking anymore. This is about giving to heal, giving to help, giving to be an example to help someone overcome and show that they're not alone. I have this little theory that I do when I'm working with my clients. I call it a snuggle push theory. And the snuggle push theory is something I've used in every career that I've worked in that I've shared with you at the beginning of my talk uh, and even to this day where I tend to develop trust with individuals or organizations on what I have to offer. And I'm able to push certain envelopes of my content to make my point in addition to not disrespecting or harming or bringing something that is near and dear to people's hearts that could hurt them or make them feel more of reserved. They don't wanna be a part of it. I'm able to establish that. And I do that daily, even in my personal life. I understand the value of that. So I can't say in good faith, when I'm looking to build relationships that all my relationships are based on getting. It's not even close. I want to help. 
I want to bring value. I want to support. I want to encourage. I want to guide. I want to offer. I want to give. There's nothing in any of that stuff that I've just shared with you all right now that says I need to take. Because that's where the value comes from. And each and every one of us out there has a goal and a dream and an ambition, an idea of what he or she wants to do moving forward in our career search and in where we want to go. But as we are thinking of that and working along those lines of that, we've got to also make sure we're staying in our own lane, running at our own pace. Because it is a marathon, there's days where you might end up walking. There's days that you might end up jogging. There's days where you might pick up the pace and start sprinting. But the, the goal here is to help you understand as a chief heart officer, you're in control. You're the one that's going to be in control of the pace that you set for yourself. You're in control of how far you want to go or how much you want to do. And that's going to come down to now looking at productivity. When it comes to employment, how are you structuring your day to look for work like it is a job? Because now more than ever, because of the five generations that are in the, the market right now and the job market is tight, how many times or how many jobs are you applying to on a daily basis that you can go to bed at night and say, you know what, today was a productive day. I was able to apply for X, Y, Z amount of jobs and I was able to get one call back for an interview. Tomorrow, I'm going to try to go for this amount of jobs. Now, what does this all mean when I speak like that? I did an experiment with myself from February of 2020 to September of 2020. And I have a black book that I keep with me that I documented applying for jobs on a daily basis. And then I would tally them up for a total on a weekly basis. I also tracked my rejections, the jobs that um, contacted me for an interview and what the outcome was. And I did that from February 2020 to September. And during that time, I can't even tell you how many jobs I applied for because I don't look at the numbers. I look at the productivity. And I realized that you, I had to increase my productivity almost beyond the 10x level. I had to do it like almost 15 to 20x levels per week just to be able to get myself in the market and gain traction and attention. And that was also true when it came to social media. I make posts on a daily basis where I'm, I'm posting five to 10 pieces of content per day versus one or two. So your productivity and work ethic towards your goals and what you're trying to achieve is vital right now. If you're applying for five jobs in a day, try to go for six or seven and let's see where that takes you. Target, let me see if I can hit eight. The next day, let me see if I can hit 10 and so on and so on and so on. And the more you document your journey on this very step to help you be successful, when you go through a challenge ever in your life again, what you're ultimately designing when you document your journey in this way is how you dealt with a moment in time when your back was against the wall and you were struggling and yet you didn't quit and look at what you produced in that time and look at what the outcome was of that effort. You see, documenting your journey is essential when it comes to self-awareness and looking for work in this era right now. Because the documenting of your journey is now something that is real. And you can't argue that. You're going to look back and see the number of rejections. You're going to see, oh, I only heard from three people in six months. You're going to see um, you know, the, the jobs I didn't get, you're going to document all that because no matter what life hands to you, life is going to happen again. Life will happen again. We are meant to have good and bad, hurtful success, greatness and low times. But what the goal is as human beings is how do we balance those things out? Right? How do we balance dealing with this new world order of what we're dealing with COVID right now? All I'm saying to myself on a daily basis is that I have another shot. Today's a new day. I have another shot. 
I have another shot. And every day that's given to me is another opportunity. You have to take each day with a return on your investment, which is your time that you'll never get back. And when you look at overall your perspective on your time and how you use it, it's going to be something that you'll look at and you'll say, man, I couldn't believe I was able to get through this. And this wasn't your friend telling you this. This wasn't a loved one telling you this. This is you telling you this, which is your own chief heart officer of who you are. See, it's great when you can identify both your weaknesses and your strengths and also identify your failures and your successes, and you can handle them both. That's the goal moving forward in this new world order is how can you handle both? And when you can cope and handle your own unique challenges, those are the things that's going to make you elite in the future. I thank each and every one of you for your time. I thank each and every one of you for this opportunity to share some information with you. I hope it helped. I would like to open the chat while I have a few minutes here with you. If you have any questions, I would be honored to answer anything. Please, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Please feel free to ask. Hello. Uh, how do you show empathy? Gratitude and resume. So, so I have a question from um, Ver Verna, if I pronounce your name correctly. Um, how do you show empathy and gratitude in a resume? It's a great question. I think gratitude and empathy can be shown in a resume in how you articulate your value in jobs that you've done and what, how you impacted a client or the service to be better because you want to be able to demonstrate using those words in your resume of how it aligns with your experience. So that's kind of the best way I can answer that question. Does that help, uh, Verna? Uh, Arthur says here, I'm a programmer developer. Is, uh, is this a smart time to do professional certifications? I think um, it's a great way, uh, Arthur, just to answer your question. I think it's great that you, if there's an opportunity to do any type of um, upgrading or educating, this is the time to do it. Um, I believe because of the time we have and technology, things are accessible through technology more quicker and more available. So I would say it doesn't hurt. Uh, Verna is asking an example uh, pertaining to her question. How do you show empathy and gratitude in a resume? So an example would be, um, I'll use myself working in the Canadian Mental Health Asso uh, Association. Um, I, was, uh, I documented that I worked with clients between the age of 16 and 24 that were diagnosed with a mood disorder of schizophrenia. Um, I used my snuggle push theory that I shared with everyone out here today um, in my outline of my approach because I would document my approach saying um, as a therapist my approach to help my know who they are learn where they are um, help where they are and then help them move towards their goals and I call that my snuggle push theory and I would document that as an example in underneath the name of CMHA so I'm not just talking about my skills I'm also showing how I use my skills does that help, Verna? Awesome. Glad glad I could help you. Arthur, did I was I was I able to address your, your question properly there as well? Just want to honor that. Awesome. Great. Anybody else out there have any questions? Please feel free.
this is all a journey, ladies and gentlemen, that we're on, and we're all in it together. So, uh, you know, nobody is immune to this stuff that's going on. What companies are hiring? <laughs> Great question, um, Sh Shams, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, what companies are hiring? It all depends on what you're interested in. I can't, I can't say that because I don't have a, a, a ball to, to look at the future or even what's going on present. Depending on what your jobs are or what your interest of employment is, I would say look to connect with people first through LinkedIn who have similar interests as you. Um, the next step would be looking up um, different employment websites such as Charity Village or Indeed um, or even LinkedIn also um, does a, um, they have job postings there as well. Um, I would say look into, look a few of those examples first and approach making those connections with individuals from both LinkedIn and any other events that you have access to network with in order to hear more about what companies are hiring because it depends on what your, your goals are. I, I, I can't say everybody's hiring because that's not true, um, but it just, we have to streamline. Anybody else have any questions out there? Not a problem, Mark. I'm happy to do so and humbled to be here. I always love helping you guys out. You're welcome, Carrie. Thank you for participating and being here, and thank you for your time. I'm happy to honor any other questions. Oh, Arthur, you're welcome. Thank you for your time. Paul, thank you for your time. Please feel free to connect with me through LinkedIn, everyone. Um, you can find me as Mark Dunn on LinkedIn, and I'm happy to uh, you know, be a part of your network. Raymond, thank you as well. Verna, thank you so much. Pleasure. It was great to serve you all today. Thank you so much. Everybody stay safe and stay healthy and uh, have a great day and enjoy the rest of your uh, networking event here with this great organization, TorontoJobs.ca. And I hope and wish you all the best. Thank you. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hello. How are you? Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. I can't hear you, Mark. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Sorry, I can't hear you, buddy. You can't hear me? Oh, okay, sorry, I'm not sure. I have no sound. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, if, if anybody else can hear me, um, uh, I'm just gonna, yeah, I think uh, other people can hear me. So thanks very much, Mark. I know you can't hear me, but uh, I just wanted to say thanks uh, on behalf of the, the team. And also um, for uh, my session, I will be starting shortly. Thanks, Tony. I appreciate the fact that you can hear. That's awesome. Yeah. So feel free to, Thank you. to jump in. Uh, to the other, we got uh, the information out to you guys. Yeah. If anybody, uh, if anybody uh, can, uh, uh, Tony, I know you can hear, uh, and uh, uh, I know most of you can uh, hear me and Mark, but we can't hear each other for some reason. Technology. Uh, anyways, uh, I will be starting shortly in the uh, next room, but I wanted to say thanks to Mark for uh, being here and uh, for. 
uh, helping out with uh, with the event. Uh, great to, to, to be here. So I'm going to be jumping into my session, the state of the Canadian labor market, uh, in a few seconds here. So feel free to uh, pop in there, and I will be starting shortly. So all you got to do is just go back into sessions, quick sessions on the left-hand side, and uh, jump into uh, my session. That will be starting in a, a minute or so. so Thanks very much again, and Mark. I know you can't hear me, but I'm gonna say bye, <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll go from take there. Care. Thanks. All right, take care. Thanks. Goodbye. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye.